welcome back guys and girls as always working on something because it needs to be fixed well today it's a 2005 Nissan Pathfinder hard to start when it's hot sometimes but not always so I've already replaced the uh, crank sensor the driver's side camshaft sensor now I'm attempting to replace the passenger side camshaft sensor but in their infinite wisdom the engineers who designed this piece used a slide lock I don't know if you can see it back there let's see right there and what you do is you're supposed to push that center section that black section up toward the sensor and it's supposed to lock in place which then unlocks the connector and then you slide it off well of course it worked fine on the assembly line and that's all they care about because 2005 is the uh, year Nissan forgot you know refused to do recalls anything on them even though they have the same problems so anyway at this point that no longer stays locked in position to unlock the connector and that right there is every bit of wire they give you. You can only get two hands in there barely. You need to force that lock down with all your strength with a thumb and a finger and then try to pull that apart. And as all these stupid computerized sensor connectors are, it's got that rubber neoprene whatever dust boot in there and it's glued in solid basically after all the heat and years of use so trying to figure out how the hell to get it off of there and i think i come up with a solution okay guys so what i ended up doing was taking a pair of tin snips reaching back in there putting one blade down in the top of that connector where the lock is and snipping each side and then now I can pull that damn lock out of the way it doesn't hurt the wiring it doesn't affect how it plugs in it's just the damn lock and uh, you basically have to climb up on top of the engine you probably want to cover your battery because you're laying all over it you got both hands in there trying to do this from the passenger side somewhat and uh, you probably don't want your kids or the neighbor kids around unless you want them to learn a few new curse words so anyway I'm gonna try to go ahead and pop that apart and see if that'll let me unplug the stupid thing and then put the new one in okay this is where I'm at now I was able to take a flat screwdriver, push down in there, and just pop all that lock crap out of the way. Now, where those two white tabs are, they are still holding the connector to the body of the sensor. It, it's kind of like a T on the sensor, and they're locked in there. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to either press down on those get them out of the way or go ahead and just pry them off also let's see what happens okay so I don't know if you can see it very well but the back tab broke off the front tab I was able to pull forward and get it unlocked so now I just have to reach in there lay on top of the engine get both hands in there and try to finally unplug that damn thing you know I don't like having to destroy a connector like this but when you can't get it off they didn't give you enough wire to get it up out of there and you can barely see it and you can't once you get your hands on it there's not a lot you can do if you need to replace it the only other option is take half this damn harness off the engine and get that up out of there to work on it I've already spent 45 minutes just trying to get it unplugged so see if I can get it out of there well as soon as uh, I had that tab bent up out of the way it unplugged just as easy as could be 
So now I have the new sensor installed, tightened down. So all I have to do is now get this plugged back in. And uh, as long as I don't break that last tab off, it'll lock on and hold it in place. So let's see if I can get that done. All right, guys, after a little wrangling around and laying on top of the engine, I got it plugged back in. It did click into place, lock on. I pulled on it, it did not come off. So even though it looked pretty mangled and destroyed, it still locks on. And uh, I did not do anything to the electrical portion of that connector, only the lock. And you know, if you guys have ever worked on older vehicles, there was nothing wrong with the old squeeze type connectors where you would put a finger and a thumb on each side of it give it a squeeze and then pull. They make these things way too complicated a lot of times and really it's just because somebody needs to justify their paycheck and their position and change things up every year. And I deal with it not only in automotive but uh, on machinery and on other things and it just does not need to be this difficult and it just adds cost. You know, a simple squeeze connector is way, way less parts than that was. And uh, so, anyway, you know, sorry you had to listen to me rant and rave, but this kind of crap is just one of my peeves. You know, having worked on old vehicles that you could basically three wrenches, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers, you could fix them. And I understand emissions, standards, and all that, but still, a lot of this stuff is way over complicated. And it doesn't need to be. So anyway, guys, I hope you don't ever have to do this, but if you have that problem, that's how I got around it. Thanks for watching.